Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Howe. I'm the Vice President here at Zscaler for Emerging Technologies. We covered in an earlier video the idea of zero trust architecture and how the verification of identity, not just of individuals and users, but also of the workloads and IoT, OT or things, um, allows us to be able to get granular control before we move into the control phase. And now we're going to cover the control phase. So let's start by talking about that. So control really breaks down into the next three elements of a successful zero trust architecture. And we start with this, we need to first and absolutely foremost realize that to be able to provide control, we need to have visibility. And that visibility comes from the fact that we can look inside the content of this connection. Now, the challenge with this is that we need to be able to have the technology available to inspect the traffic here. Inspection is very challenging because, well, 90 plus percent of internet traffic is TLS or SSL inspected, or, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, TLS or SSL controlled and encrypted. So to decrypt that and look inside that information, we need to have substantial infrastructure, but it is a absolute critical step of a proper zero trust architecture is we need to now inspect this phase to be able to provide the appropriate controls on the appropriate sessions so that you can protect your business. Now, once we have this inspection and element in place, you need to think of it in terms of two, a, a very simple uh, idea. First, traffic needs to get from those users and devices here to the inspection layer, which is what we're doing through this zero trust architecture. We need to have the controls applied here, and I'm going to outline those controls in a minute or two. But then once that's uh, in process, we need to then repackage that up and send that on to the destination application, which we'll get to in the policy enforcement and connection phase. That inspection phase has to happen in order to have pure control inspection control. And if we don't have that inspection, we can still provide some basic level controls. We're not going to get the granularity that a zero trust architecture demands because you need to provide the protection, not only of your enterprise, but also of your enterprise's intellectual property. And to do that, you have to inspect. It is absolutely fundamental into the protection of your ecosystem in the 21st century. So let's talk about the insights of what inspection drives. And the first one is understanding risk. Now risk in itself combines to make a lot of very interesting outcomes for a zero trust exchange. So when we look at risk, we need to consider it, of course, in terms of what the initiator is, whether it's the user, the thing, or the workload. And when we're looking at that, we need to understand the behavior of what is actually happening. So when I talk about behavior, it is assessing but whether a user or a thing or a workload is doing something risky. Was it doing something risky before and will it do something risky in the future? So that risk is broken down into basically a behavior analytics of before, before, current, and after try and make this actually visible to you and just make sure it's working. And that, those three areas allow us to make a, an inspection control across that risk that has happened. So if something's happening today, right now it's current, what impact does that have on the after? And what happened beforehand to get us to this situation? What's drive, what drove us to the situation where the risk is now changed? So that risk is calculated every time there's a connection. What that means is when a user, initiator, so thing, user, workload makes a connection, what they're doing allows us to understand whether they're risky now and whether they'll be risky in the future because we're going to assess it on every single application session. This power of this risk assessment then allows us to then say, well, if it's risky now and they've done something that's risky that has caused their value to change, then the next session, the very next session will be, will, uh, will be controlled differently than the previous one. And those controls will outline a bit more, not just in the next fa few phases, but also in policy. The goal being that this allows you to set your threshold of risk, risk acceptance. And we can help you inform when that risk changes to then make intelligent policy decisions when needed. So after we've assessed the risk, and not as an afterthought, risk will be continuously assessed, as I mentioned, we need to also think about how we protect or prevent against compromise.
Now, that prevention of compromise, and I'll put it over here as well, is where, get that in there, yep, where we are looking inside, again, through the inspection solution for threats against your enterprise. What are these threats? Well, things like malware, things like malicious content that is coming down from the internet that your users may be requesting or inadvertently are clicking on and uh, loading on the computer or attempting to load on the computer. This allows us to then not only stop these, these threats and also inspect them, but also allow you to have insights as to who the risky person might be, who the risky enterprise, uh, entity in the enterprise may be. Now, this allows us to then not only look inside the traffic flow, but also start sending it to different control stacks. Things like sandboxing, or ATP, or Advanced Threat Protection Engines, that allows us to then not only say, well, that's malicious, or it looks malicious, let's go and uh, detonate that in a virtual machine or a, 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 you know, completely restricted area to ensure that that is not going to have a risk against your enterprise, the same time allows us to say, well, if it does, what would be the threat that it actually drives? Is it going to do uh, a malware install? Is it going to try and exfiltrate data? Is it going to do all these things? So understanding that in the entirety of that threat prevention is critical to ensuring that we are protecting your enterprise. Now, this is not the entirety of the set of controls to help prevent against compromise in your, your ecosystem. This is just a tidbit to show you because there's much more we'll dive into in larger conversations with our teams. But in this video, I wanted to give you that insight of just the prevention of those compromised threats so that we can understand it in terms of the control layer here. Because now we need to move into the next control, which is similar, again, based upon the inspection, is understanding how we, pre we, we prevent against data loss. Make that a bit bigger. So, data loss. Now, what is this and how do we help? Now, ultimately, your enterprise has a set of intellectual property or things that you consider to be essential to the business operation of your company. You need that to run, you need it to work. Otherwise, if it's not, you, if it's stolen, that information can be used by someone to copy your, your solution, maybe cause uh, compromise against your customers, other things like that. So you need to hold on to your, uh, your integrity and your information in your intellectual property pipeline as well. So the good thing about this is that you can define what you consider to be your keys of the kingdom, things you think that are important. And what that allows you to do is then also put in controls to say, well, these are things I, sh I don't want to go out to the internet. I don't want people to see these. So this is where we start putting in controls around uh, different types of, of, of information so that you can define, I don't want this to go out. Things like optical character recognition or OCR. This allows an enterprise to say this image or something similar to this should not be sent to the cloud or should not go out to the internet. So you can, can control it in this plane and say, I don't want anything to go out that contains this image, whatever it might be. An example we see of this is something like, maybe like a driver's license. You don't want driver's licenses of your employees, if you keep that, to be lost to the internet. So that's one example. Another one is EDM. So this is where we are doing data matching on different types of data sets, exact data sets. And that allows, us, allows you to tell us this information in this format. Say for example, a credit card number should not go out to the internet. Pretty simple, but allows us to be able to provide prevention against these sorts of data sets being lost out of your ecosystem. Then we have IDM. And again, these are only subsets of all of our controls for data loss. But indexed data matching allows us to then take a set of uh, or a format of certain types of data sets and actually go away and look for things within that. So you can think of maybe an Excel spreadsheet as a silly example, but it has a certain framework and there are certain con uh, controls with that all contain, um, contained vari variables that allows us to look for certain things. So it could be information within a field that looks like this or looks like that. And that allows you to then to define, well, if I see in across all of my files, this value, maybe it's a, a certain name, maybe it's a certain file type or format, Please flag that, block it, and, or allow it, depending on your control. But the goal here is to ensure that you're able to prevent your data being stolen. Now, this data loss and prevention is not solely in line as the users or the initiators create requests. It's also something that needs to be done out of bound or actually direct through an API integration is probably a better way to say it, so that 
your rules and controls are not only applied to data in flow, but also data in rest. So information that's stored up here in your cloud ecosystems. This must be uh, set up so that you're not only having your traffic or your information looked at here, but if somebody's for whatever reason saving things here, you're able to match that as well and protect against it being lost to a, a cloud, a, um, a solution that is not within your control and so forth. Now, this is all well and good, and it's important to keep these controls in mind as we build the control structure and as we get into policy. But what's also important to keep in mind is that both of these values, both the data loss and, uh, and uh, compromise prevention, also allow us to define sets of what you will and will not accept, or for, that, for lack of a better word, posture. Posture can, is a control that you set that you say, I would like to have my solutions, whether it be up here in the cloud or something in the control layer, this is what I want to see. In anything, if anything exceeds or change, is outside the bounds of this control, it should be a means for block or allow conditionally, um, and also ensuring that that's being fl uh, flagged for further investigation. So the ability to set not only looking for the content, but also the controls around the framework in which those content is being assessed must be put in place. And that's what this control structure does. It allows us to be able to say, we don't want risky activity to happen. We want to stop compromises. We want to ensure our intellectual property is not stolen. And next, we move into policy. How do we control that? We'll dive, that in, dive into that in a few minutes, but uh, I hope this control phase is very clear. And if you'd like to know more, we will provide a lot more information on our website and talk to our teams as well. But for that, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next section.